Welcome to make your own happy chef pizza. It's gonna make you very happy in the tummy. Before you make the pizza, make sure you have plenty of counter space. Good. Now open your happy chef pizza kit. Use the flour and the water to make the pizza dough. <laughs> Next, to make your dough rise, open the yeast and add half of its contents to the dough. Make sure you don't use more than half. Of pizza crust. For a perfect shape and thickness, carefully lift the dough with both hands and give it a good spin as you toss it in the air. Ah! Sauce is the heart and soul of your happy chef pizza. For a zesty homemade sauce, chop a clove of garlic and add an onion into a skillet. <laughs> now, get ready for one of the happiest dining experiences of your life. <laughs> when things start to sizzle, add a tomato. The happy chef has provided you with one, but to be sure it's ripe, hold it up to eye level and a squeeze. Gently. A fresh ripe tomato is firm and has some spring to it. When you're sure your tomato is ripe and fresh, crush it into your frying pan to capture its flavor. Putting a sauce on a pizza is an art form all its own. Some pizza chefs use a butter knife. Others prefer the bottom of a soup ladle. As with any art, each artist must find what works the best. The trick is to spread it not too thin, but not too thick, and even all around. A time to top off your masterpiece with the toppings. Cheese, mushrooms, sausage. And whatever else you like. Now, put your pie in the oven, set your timer, and get ready to enjoy! <laughs> the only way you're not a very happy chef right now is if you forgot to turn on the oven! <laughs> But the happy chefs have got just the thing for you. How's that for convenience?
Time, so very long ago, in an enchanted pinkdom, not the one that you know, there lived many lovable characters, the greatest, the best. But Little Pink Riding Hood was loved much more than the rest. He was good, he was kind, he was oh so sweet, bringing treats to his granny who was nursing sore feet. He skipped quite a lot. Uh, no one really knows why. Little Pink Riding Hood was just that kind of guy. Then there's the piggy with house made of straw, whose efforts to thwart him made big bad wolfy guffaw. <laughs> Because that clever old wolf was a gardener by trade. He fired up his leaf blower and Piggy's house was pureed. Though I don't think he planned it. He crashed the house made of sticks, leaving three frightened pigs in a house made of bricks. Well, the wolf wasn't done. No, he was hungry and mean. And he ran off to find an even bigger machine. A gigantic thing with a huge wrecking ball. He'd fricassee that house, a side of bacon for all. Uh-oh, was the thought I think that he had when the gigantic ball crashed down on his head. Little Pink Riding Hood was well on his way. Nothing could stop him from getting to Granny's this day. <laughs> but what? Wait a minute. What have we here? That wolf is up to something, something awful, I fear. Three beans for the basket, I'll trade you, he crowed. But Pink Riding Hood shook his head. No, no, no. Said bye bye to the wolf and skipped off down the road. But it's not over yet. You should know that by now. A strange man in shorts showed up with a cow. But stop! Wait a minute! Those beans are possessed! That stock is gigantic! I'm really impressed. But given some thought, and it's only a hunch, I'd rather clean up after a cow than be somebody's lunch. A quaint little cottage. A sleepy golden-haired child. I know you know this one, but bear with me a while. Three bowls filled with porridge, cold, medium, and hot. <coughs> That hungry Pink Riding Hood planned to devour the lot. We changed up the story, gave a twist to the plot. There's things going on that we kind of forgot. So pay close attention, the story gets thicker. The wolf's probably thinking, I should have left quicker! But Pink Riding
Riding Hood just keeps skipping along, unaware that the wolf is still coming on strong. He high-fives Humpty Dumpty and bids him farewell, then spends just a moment with Jack and Jill by the well. But down goes that egg. He lands with a crash! No? Uh. The king's horses and men want to know, who will clean up this trash? What's next, you might ask, and you'd be right to say. Hasn't that crazy old wolf done enough damage today? So I'll fill you in because I've got this itch. That the one thing we're missing in this tale is a witch. <laughs> she's not just any old witch. Nope, she's one of a kind. And she's really very unhappy with what the wolf left behind. So she hops on her broom, makes a gingerbread man. And off he goes running just as fast as he can. Pink's very happy. He's finally here with his basket of goodies for his sweet granny dear. But there is so much thunder booing outside. What's going to happen next? Keep your eyes open wide. Because here's where the story gets really quite hairy. Granny isn't actually a granny. She's really a fairy. That wolf better watch it. She's good with that wand. With a flick of her stick, that wolf will be gone. So what lesson do we learn from this story, my friends? If you take care of your granny, you'll eat well in the end. Ha <laughs> 
Ah! <laughs> 